Hey everyone, and welcome to What Did I Miss, where today I thought I would take a look at possibly the most popular crew not to serve on a ship named Enterprise and share five things you may not know about Star Trek Voyager. While every fan has their favorite crew and series, in 2017 Netflix looked at data from over 100 million subscribers in 190 different countries to see which episodes of Star Trek were most popular. The list found that of the 10 most watched episodes, six were from Star Trek Voyager, which at least proves the lasting support for the series. Not to mention that since the show went off the air in 2001, the character of Seven of Nine, played by Jerry Ryan, has returned in the new series Picard, and the character Captain Janeway, who is played by Kate Mulgrew, has been immortalized in a statue and will be revived as well in a new animated series named Prodigy, set to air in 2021. This crew truly were trailblazers as they set out to make their own path different from Deep Space Nine, which was already airing, and The Next Generation, who were off the air every week, but the crew were still making movies. Unlike other Star Trek crews that seem to get along for the most part, this crew is made up of two sides of a political divide that are forced to work together and try and find a way home. Over the course of their journey, they continually tackle different issues while integrating more new members into their crew and still holding true to the values of the Federation. Here, I will go into some interesting stories and details that I've learned about the cast, the ship, and the series itself, and if you do find yourself enjoying the video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. I have been releasing weekly videos about Star Trek news, as well as have a huge catalog of videos about Star Trek itself and other fun properties I like to talk about, so check back often for new stuff. Speaking of which, let's talk about Captain Janeway and her crew and go over five things you may not know about Star Trek Voyager. The Planned 75 Year Journey the abridged version of why the show Voyager even exists is that the ship was thrown 70,000 light years away from Federation space by an alien known as the Caretaker, which is also the name of the first episode of the series. The crew loses vital members during this event, but is joined by the crew of another ship of rebels known as the Maquis, who the Voyager were in fact searching for in the Badlands. Once the two crews decide to work together, it is revealed that it will take 75 years for the new crew to get back to Federation space. While that figure is staggering, there was no way that the crew of the Voyager would have been able to keep to that timeline as it would have meant that the ship would have had to travel at maximum warp without stopping for the entire trip. Suffice to say that the engines would not have been able to handle the stress, and there is no guarantee that even the crew would have been able to survive without resupplying food or other materials. Not to mention that we always see the Voyager stopping at new planets, and in fact, Voyager did make first contact with the most species of any vessel since the original USS Enterprise. So while the underlying mission was always to get home as soon as possible, there was no way at any point that it would have taken only 75 years. In reality, it ended up taking the ship only seven years to get back home, but still the 75 year projection could have been a two to 400 year journey if not for the events of the series. First Voyage of UPN not only was the episode Caretaker the first episode of the show Voyager, but it was also the first episode of anything shown on the television station UPN. UPN, or United Paramount Network, launched on January 16, 1995, initially carried programming only on Monday and Tuesday nights from 8 to 10 p.m., and the first thing aired was the first episode of Voyager. The debut was seen at the time to be a huge success, with over 21 million viewers watching, although no other series that debuted in the first year of the network would get a second season besides Voyager. The show would carry the fledgling network for most of its run, and even when it completed its seventh season run and a new Star Trek series, Enterprise, was created, it could not save the network from its eventual end. The network folded in 2006, but Paramount is starting a new streaming service this year and once again promoting Star Trek as its flagship property. I went over some news about that in my latest video, and I will link it here if you want to check it out. Let's hope that Paramount Plus has more success than its predecessor, and the increased presence of Star Trek on the network is sure to have a big impact on it. The crew almost made it home during the fourth season. Sort of. Like with any long-running series, there were many story ideas for Voyager that were written, that were either scrapped entirely or reworked into another episode, and one included a very ambitious episode towards the end of the show's fourth season. The episode was meant to show the crew returning home to the Alpha Quadrant, only for them to start dying of an unknown cause. Eventually, it would be revealed that this crew was in fact the same crew seen in the episode Demon, which did end up airing towards the end of the season, and this crew would again appear in the episode Course Oblivion. For those of you unaware of these episodes, they involved the crew of doppelgangers of the crew of Voyager that were created by organisms that were able to biologically mimic another. In the episode Course Oblivion, we see that they have forgotten they are not the original crew members and start dying because they have been away from their home planet for so long, in a poignant and heartbreaking story. Another variation of the story had the doppelgangers be a malevolent race and attempt to take over the Federation and Earth as the imposters, which would have probably made them too similar to the changelings in the Dominion War. Still, it would have been even sadder to see them return home, only to realize that this was not the actual crew of the Voyager. The Intrepid Class Voyager 
The USS Intrepid-class Voyager had many interesting characteristics that were integrated into her design based on Star Trek canon. First, the warp drive used variable geometry warp nacelles, which raised and lowered depending on whether the ship was at warp or not. Besides looking cool, it was explained in some of the background material for the first season of Voyager that this was due to the events of the Next Generation episode Force of Nature. In the episode, it is discovered that warp speed is having an effect on space and that the Federation must design warp technology to not be as destructive, and these warp nacelles are supposed to do that. Another interesting advancement on the ship are the bio neural gel packs, which are an advancement of the isolinear chip technology that runs starships. The gel packs use a hybrid organic electronic computer system that contain neural fibers surrounded in a blue gel. They help store more information and operate at faster speeds than isolinear circuitry. Another really cool but unused addition to the ship was the Aero Shuttle which was basically a smaller form of the captain's yacht seen on the USS Enterprise D and E and also descended from a hidden space under the saucer of the vessel. While very cool, this basically would mean there was no use for the Delta Flyer, which was a shuttle designed by Tom Paris, so I'm guessing this is why we never saw it. Another cool aspect of the ship is that the name is still shown to live on into the 32nd century as the USS Voyager J is shown on the series Star Trek Discovery. The cast that almost wasn't. Voyager boasts a well-rounded cast of talented acting professionals, but there are a few cast members that, that took interesting paths to get on this crew. First, the part of Captain Janeway was initially cast to a different actress who quit after a day and a half of shooting, and Kate Mulgrew was recast in the role. Other actresses considered for the role were Linda Hamilton, Aaron Gray, and frequent Star Trek guest star Susan Gibney. Kate Mulgrew was, has mentioned that one reason she never took offense to being the second choice to play the captain was that William Shatner was also not the first captain of the Enterprise, as that was Jeffrey Hunter playing Captain Captain Pike in the original series pilot The Cage. In an almost inverse of the situation, Robert Duncan McNeil was cast into the show but as a different character than originally planned. The actor had appeared as the character Nicholas Locarno in the Next Generation episode The First Duty, in which he led a squad of cadets that included Wesley Crusher and influenced them to defy Starfleet to cover up their actions. The producers really liked the actor and wanted to include him in this series, but ultimately felt that the actions in the episode made the character irredeemable, which led them to create a new character for the actor. Also, Tim Russell has a long career in Star Trek and science fiction that does not always include Voyager. In 1993, the actor played a different character on The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, and then again was on the bridge of the Enterprise B on the 1995 movie Generations, all of this before he was eventually cast as Tuvok. But he also has a very special speaking role in one of the most influential space films ever made, Mel Brooks' Spaceballs. Well, that is my list of five things you may not know about Star Trek Voyager. I have always been a huge fan of the series, and it's probably the one I rewatch the most next to Deep Space Nine. I think it's interesting to compare these two shows as well, because I believe that Deep Space Nine gets the rap for being the darkest entry of the pre-J.J. Abrams era of Star Trek, and honestly, Voyager has some very dark episodes too. But the overall optimism of the show that is motivated by a captain, driven to get her crew home at any cost, I think casts the series in a brighter light and solidifies the show as a more serious entry than The Next Generation, but lighter than Deep Space Nine and Enterprise. But you let me know in the comments, what did I miss? Were there any facts about Voyager that I left out that you think are interesting? This is always more fun when I hear from you, so let me know what you think down in the comments. Also, if you want to support the channel, please think about hitting that subscribe button for weekly Star Trek videos, and if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button now. Thank you for joining, and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?